For decades now, baseball statisticians everywhere have attempted to tackle a daunting question. How can we best quantify a fielder's performance? Everybody has heard of errors in fielding percentage, but is that the best way to understand a fielder's value? In today's video, we will be tacking two of the top defensive sabermetric stats out there, UZR and DRS. Welcome to Simple Sabermetrics, the brains behind baseball's latest data-driven revolution. If this is your first time here, and you want to learn more about the practical applications of baseball's latest technologies and training techniques, join the movement now by clicking the subscribe button down below. As I began my research towards putting this video together, I realized that this is not something that I was super knowledgeable about in the first place. But why? I've heard of a range of different statistics, such as the classic fielding percentage, or Bill James' range factor, but these statistics rely on box score on things like putouts, assists, and errors. The most popular stat I've heard of in my time working in baseball is fielding percentage. You need to make less errors in order to be successful. And perhaps that is true, to an extent, but is it the best way to evaluate defenders? Through my research, I came to the conclusion that I don't think so. If you picture the stereotypical above average defender, some things like a good arm and more range may come to mind, but if a player can get to more balls, that also leads to a higher potential to make more errors. So in defensive stats, by penalizing errors, we also can't reward range at the same time. All of the previous stats mentioned above rely on penalizing mistakes rather than rewarding range. But in order to reward a player's range, we need the technology to truly track their movements. And only recently, with the Chiron Hago cameras, allowed us to start doing this. From an entertainment application, we've begun to see things like catch probability and star catches, but how else is this defensive ability being measured? Enter UZR and DSR. First, we will focus on UZR, or Ultimate Zone Rating. The goal of this statistic is to put a run value to a player's defensive performance, similar to that of weighted runs above average. In order to do this, They've broken down the stat into several categories to cover plays that may have a positive or negative effect on a player's performance. Starting with ARM, or Outfield Arm Runs. This is the measure of the amount of runs an outfielder saves with their arm by preventing players from advancing. The next is DPR, or Double Play Runs. As you would imagine, this is the amount of runs an infielder saves by turning double plays. Then there is RNGR, or Range Runs which takes into account the number of balls a player gets to compared to the league average at their position. And finally, there's error runs, which compares the number of errors a player makes compared to other players at their position. All of these numbers are then tossed into a formula, which is weighted for park factors and the like, and it spits out one positive or negative number, positive meaning they perform above average and negative meaning below average. To oversimplify what goes into this equation, you can picture it as a player's ability to create outs compared to the league's average rate in each of these categories. If a player's rate is higher than the league average, then this positively affects that player's UZR. Next, let's look at a scale of UZR to give you an idea of where your favorite players may rank next time you look over on fan graphs. A Golden Glove caliber player typically hosts a UZR rating of above 15. You go down by 5 each time to see how these players separate themselves from great to above average to average. And like I said, the scores below zero show you a player is performing below league average. The further negative you get, the worse the player is. Now, let's take a look at DRS, or defensive runs scored. This statistic is very similar to that of UZR, as it is rated on the same exact scale as UZR, and it's calculated by using a player's performance compared to the league's average at their position. The difference, then, is going to be the categories in which you are ranked upon. You will see some similarities to UZR in categories like outfielders' arm run saved and double plays run saved, but this stat, unlike UZR, has the ability to rank catchers' and pitchers' defensive abilities through categories like stolen base runs saved. All of those categories are then compiled into our total defensive run saved number, which, like I said before, is put on the same ranking scale as we covered before in UZR. Now, before we wrap up this video, let's touch on some key points to remember about utilizing defensive statistics. The first being, you have to consider sample size when diving into this information. Both UZR and DRS have a different way of deciding how much data is enough data to make a solid conclusion. 
Because these stats are counting stats, more games does give a player an advantage. UZR claims that having three seasons of past data allows a good enough sample size to determine how good a player really is, while DRS has a constant one-year rolling score to combat this. So remember, when you dive into this information, take this into account. Also, it's important to note the way this info is collected is through using Baseball Info Solutions, which is manually inputted by people. So there also may be some, most likely very little, human error in these stats as well. But the main point of me putting together this video is to show you all out there that there is more to the game defensively than just errors in fielding percentage. These two stats are much better representations of an athlete's performance than fielding percentage. Finally, let's cover my key takeaways about defensive stats. First and foremost, UZR and DRS are good. They give a good understanding in an easy to read way of how players perform defensively. But technology is evolving, and unless you're within an LV organization, you probably don't have access to direct movement data that is required to track how far a player had to travel in order to make a play. And it's even harder to compare that to league average players' ranges. But this information is available, just not publicly, and it's becoming more and more commonplace. But on this channel, I love to tie it all together with what you can do where you're at today, no matter your level. So diving into things like each of your player's speed and acceleration levels, or utilizing hit data to put together positional shifts are great ways to begin diving into creating a more successful defense. At the end of the day, we need more data on this information to find the perfect statistic, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't start doing what we can now with what we have. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more simple saber metrics, please subscribe. Click the video on the left for more baseball animations or the video on the right to check out my new vlog. Leave a comment and a like down below to show your support and I will see you next Wednesday with a new baseball animation.